How you doing? Welcome to another edition of Making You a Bartending Pro. I'm Jason. So this is the fourth and final episode in the Getting the Job mini series that's designed to get you up to speed and, and applying and getting the job as a bartender. So if you haven't watched the first three episodes, make sure you go start at the first episode. If you haven't watched the Getting Started Doing Private Parties, you should probably go watch that first because that fits in to this whole plan. So far, if you've done everything up to this point, you'll hopefully have been doing some private party bartending and getting a little bit of experience. You'll know the list of places, you'll have a list of places, you'll know how to make a list of places, you'll know how to approach the time of the day to go talk to managers, what to say, to push their buttons, how to get over some of the objections. You'll have your resume set up. And if you've done all of this up to this point, you should start getting calls for the interview. So that's what this episode is. This is about getting ready for the interview and nailing the interview and getting the job. So again, to kind of recap, the main thing that you're trying to do is to show people your personality because that's your personality is, is always what will get us a job in this industry or any other. So what we're trying to do is get down to just a real base person to person conversation so that they can get to know us, who we are, and then that way they'll get to like us hopefully and give us a shot. Because there's always this weird power play whenever you go into an interview where the manager's up here and we're kind of down here and they have all the power uh, because they're the one that can has the ability to give you the job and we're down here like, please give us a job. So we're trying to level this out. And I'm gonna go into how to do that, but that's, that's basically what we're trying to do. Because if we can talk to someone on a person to person basis, then it's gonna lower their kind of position as this like high person and the manager or owner and it's going to just get them talking to us as if we're just equals and then that way they're going to better feel who we are and who our personality is and it's going to maximize our opportunities okay so supposing that you've done all this stuff up to this point which if you have there's high likelihood that you're going to start getting calls in which case we need to prepare we need to do some things to prepare for the interview. The first thing that we need to do is try to do research about the establishment. Now, depending on this and where it back a few steps in the dropping off the resume process, you know, that you might want to do a little bit of this research before you actually go out and apply to some places because it is possible to you for you to go into a place and say, hey, are you hiring for bartenders? And they're like, yeah, let's go right now. And they'll give you an interview on the spot. It's not very common. And I don't think you should do this for every single place before you go apply. But if there's a couple of really important spots that you really have your eye on, you should maybe, it would be, it could be a good idea to do this before you even go apply. But definitely you wanna do all this stuff before you go into an interview. So the first thing you do is just go online. They'll probably have a website. So you can just go into their website and you're gonna look for a story, maybe an about, about us or a history or something like that. And just get the backstory of the establishment. How long have they been there? Who are the owners? Is there a cool story on how it got started? Is it, you know, kind of a legacy? It was been passed down from great grandfather to son to grandson, you know, some, some sort of a history behind it. Or maybe it's just that they're the number one sports bar in your area. Whatever their sort of idea of why they are unique and special in the market that they're in, you need to understand that. And if you don't, if they don't have a website, another easy way to do this is to go onto their social media profiles and go on their Facebook, their Instagram, and just kind of see, um, you can get a feel for the type of establishment that they are and the type of employees that they have. And this is important for us to be dressed properly as well, which I'll get into that in a minute. So do your research about the place to try to get an understanding of the type of establishment that it is. The other thing you should try to do is to try to get a look at their menu. So if they serve food, try to get a basic understanding. You don't need to memorize the menu, but just try to have a basic understanding of the types of foods that they offer. Look at their drink menu. Is there certain drinks that they are known for? and make sure that you maybe, you know, try to practice these a little bit beforehand if you can. And if you can go in and actually know some of or all of their drinks on their menu before the interview, that's gonna be huge. So 
do the research about the establishment before you even get there. Okay, now, assuming that we have that information, the next thing we need to do is think about preparing to go to the interview. So this means doing stuff like making sure you have gas in your car, making sure that if you need to pay for a parking meter that you have change, make sure you leave so that you have plenty of time to get there. Always be early. Do not ever show up late to an interview. I shouldn't even have to say this. If you show up late to an interview, you might as well just turn around and go home because you're not gonna get the job. If you show up too late to an interview, I won't even talk to you. So make sure that you are early, you're on time. You don't wanna be having 10 minutes to get to the interview and you need change for the meter and you gotta go run across the street and break a 20. Bring change, make sure you're full, your car is full of gas. Make sure you get down there at least a half an hour ahead of time especially if you know that you are five to 10 minutes late to your life. Get there an hour early and you'll still only be a half an hour ahead of time. And then you can just post up across the street or sit in your car or in the park and just kind of do some breathing exercises to relax. Now, the other reason that we want to do research about the establishment and look at pictures and stuff on their website or online is we want to see what the employees dress like. Whatever their attire is at work, we want to try to match that. So if it's kind of edgy, like it's maybe it's like a, a hipster or like a, or like a biker bar or something, you don't want to go in there wearing like a suit and tie. Although hipster bar, that might actually kind of work. But like if it's like a biker bar and everybody's wearing Harley shirts and biker boots and you go into a job interview in a suit and tie, it doesn't matter how well that interview goes. They're just not going to feel like you fit in. However, if you've done the research and you know that's a Harley bar, you want to up this a little bit, right? If a place is real casual and they just wear t-shirts and stuff, don't ever go to an interview just in a t-shirt. But, you know, you could maybe have like a collared shirt that's got a Harley logo or maybe like a, a leather Harley shirt or something, you know, up the nice scale a little bit, but you want to match the colors. Like if they all wear blue shirts, make sure if, even if it's a collared shirt, make sure it's try to get the same color blue. If they wear gray slacks or, or khaki slacks, then you want to wear khaki slacks. And this just basically will give kind of the impression, even if it's subconscious, they might not notice it, but it's going to just see you fitting in. They can see you almost wearing the employee attire already. So that's another reason why it's important to do research before you go in. Then the other thing, even though I don't know if I made it clear, but when you go in and you're uh, dropping off resumes, you just want to talk to and ask for the hiring manager. Remember, not the manager, because the manager gets to deal with angry people. Hiring manager, because then they know you're looking for a job. But when we're dropping off resumes, we're basically just trying to talk to the hiring manager. In this instance, when you're coming for the interview, you want to talk to everybody. Now, don't be obnoxious about this. Be within your normal, just kind of outgoing nature, hopefully. Maybe outside of your comfort zone a little bit, but you want to try to be talking to people. You want to talk to the hostess. You want to talk to the locals. You know, I mean, go up to someone if it's convenient and not awkward and somebody's standing there and they have just eaten or, or you can tell they're a customer. It's like, hey, how is this place? I have an interview here. You know, is this a cool place? And, you know, what's your favorite things about it? And you never know. I mean, this could be someone who's close to the establishment and they're like, hey, this guy's awesome. You know, give him a job. So you want to talk to people and, and what this will do is show that you are outgoing and that you're able to talk to people. Because one of our main jobs as a bartender is to just be friendly and outgoing and to be able to talk to people. And remember the enthusiasm. So be just genuinely enthusiastic. Maybe talk a little bit louder to put that across. You know, because I mean, if I start talking, you know, maybe start flirting with the, the hostess girl or something while I'm waiting to talk to the manager, and I just build a little rapport with her and then on the way in, she's like, good luck, Jason. And she gives me a high five. And the manager's gonna be like, do, do you know her? And you can go, yeah, we go back like five minutes. So this is, this is what they wanna see. You're fitting in, you're personable, you have an outgoing personality. That's what they're looking for. So when you are getting ready to go into the interview with the manager, you might go into their office, you might go just sit at a table somewhere. When you come into the establishment, or if you're going into the office, you wanna to try to look around for themes, things that, especially if you go into an office especially, is people will put things around their office that remind them why they do their job. So maybe it's pictures of their kids, maybe it's pictures of a sailboat or fishing or of golfing or something. 
things that let them sort of daydream when they're in their job about the things that they would rather be doing. So a good example, if you go into an office and they pull you into an office for an interview, before the interview even starts, as soon as I walk in, I'm looking for stuff. So if I see like a little golf ball paperweight on his desk and a golf club in the corner and a picture of a golf course on the wall, this person obviously golfs. Before they even swing around to sit down, you can go, hey, are you a golfer? And they're immediately gonna change that frame of mind of we're in an interview, I'm up here, they're down here to, yeah, I'm a golfer, are you a golfer? Wham, and now we're, we're talking to them on that person to person level that we're trying to get to. And then just be honest. If you golf, say, yeah, I love golfing, even though I suck and even I've played forever. Or no, I've never really golfed. It looks really fun, but man, is it hard? How long did it how long you've been playing? And you want to try to get them to start talking about themselves. It's just human nature. One of the favorite things for us to talk about is ourselves. We're just hardwired that way. Even if you're sort of an introvert, it doesn't matter. So when you start talking to someone, you want to kind of match their speed and tonality that they are talking to you with. And this is a rapport building technique called pacing. So if I'm just kind of here, mellow, talking to you at this sort of pace and tone, then you want to kind of match that. Now you want to be a little bit more on it so that you seem enthusiastic, but if they're kind of like this and you come in, you're like, hey man, yeah, this place looks awesome. I can't wait to start working here. They're going to think you're a spaz. Likewise, if they have a lot of energy and they're big and outgoing and you're kind of like this, then you're just going to, there's, there's going to be a disconnect on how they f feel like what type of person that they think you are. So you want to match the tone and pace of their same speech when they're talking to you, but just a little half a notch higher so that it seems enthusiastic. This is something that will work with work. This is something that'll work with interviews. This is stuff that will work with dating. And you might think, oh, well, I don't wanna be fake. I just, oh, that's so fake. You tend to do this anyway, right? I'll give you an example. When you're hanging out with your grandparents on Thanksgiving, you know, you, you generally don't have the same speech patterns and style of talking and subject matter that you have with your best friends when you're out on a Friday night, right? I mean, maybe, I don't know what kind of relationship you have with your grandparents, but you, you know, I think you kind of get my point there. You'll tend to do this anyway. So it isn't necessarily about being fake. It's about just kind of optimizing your connection with the person in front of you. So if you can be aware of this, you can use this to your advantage. And that doesn't mean you're fake, that just means you're smart. Pacing is a great rapport building technique. Now another one is called mirroring. And this means that you're basically mirroring the body positioning of the person in front of you. And you want to be subtle about this, right? You don't want to do it like, so if the manager's kind of here doing this, going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't want to go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or if they're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you want to go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. You want to do it slowly. So if they kind of sit back in their chair, then you want to, you know, you don't ever want to slouch in a chair, but you can kind of rock back a little bit. If they're sort of have their hand up here like this, then you can slowly kind of, kind of scratch and slowly start to just very subtle. You got to be subtle about this, but it's a trick that if you do it right, they won't notice it on a conscious level, but subconsciously their brain will kind of start to realize like this is something kind of what's going on here this is kind of familiar and I can't figure out why and then it'll kind of click in your subconscious mind like this is like standing in front of a mirror this is that same thing when we're in front of a mirror this this person must be just like us and if they're just like us then hey we should be best friends and we should definitely work together so mirroring is another rapport building technique that you have to be subtle about it and you might not be able to do it during the whole interview or the whole time, but where it's natural and you can do it, it's always a good idea. All right, now the next thing is when you go into the interview, you wanna have a little note card that's got five to seven questions or so about the establishment. And this can be anything from like, if you couldn't find any history about what's the backstory, you know, you can ask, you know, what's the history of the establishment? How long has the owner, has it always been the same owner? How long has he owned it? Ask the manager how long they've been there. 
um, you know, what if they're a sports bar and you don't know and it's been there a long time, it's like has it always been a sports bar? You know, just a couple of basic questions that is showing interest because if you can show that you're interested in the establishment, it's going to have them reciprocate interest in you. It's like when you were in school, I don't know, grade school, high school, whenever, and you had never thought about any certain person in terms of being, you know, cute or attractive to you. But when you heard that they liked you, even if just for a second, your brain thinks about it and goes, hmm, yeah, they are pretty cute. You know, and, and it's, I know stories of marriages blossoming from that. And it might, or it might just dissipate in the moment like, eh, no, nah, she's not really my style or he's not really my style. But interest reciprocates interest is my point. So if you can show that you're interested in the establishment or in that person, which is why we ask them about their personal interest in golf and whatever, then it just will help build reciprocated interest in us. So have a few questions set that five to seven that you have written out. You're only probably gonna ask two or three. One question should have a presupposition that we're getting the job meaning that it's framed within the mindset that we are going to get hired. My favorite one is to ask, so when I start working here, is it gonna be you that's training me or is it gonna be one of the other managers? So what's the presupposition in there? When I start working here, I'm gonna start working here. I'm gonna get the job. So it it's pushes the idea into their head that they are going to hire you. And it's another subtle one. And sometimes they'll like maybe chuckle about it. It's like, oh, really? You think you got the job, huh? And, you, and if they call you out, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm ready. Let's do this. So it's good to have a question like that that presupposes that you're going to get the job. But one of the questions you do not want to ask about is money. Don't ask about money. You just want to get the job first. Then they'll train you, obviously you know you can you can look up ahead of time whatever the standard is in that area for what people get paid hourly is probably what you're going to get paid hourly the only time you're going to negotiate on an hourly rate is if you're like a manager so generally right so this isn't a hard and fast always rule but usually it's just you're you're paid what you're paid and there's no negotiations and the tipping techniques and processes and all that kind of stuff don't ask about that shit You'll learn about that and you'll get trained about that once you get hired. Wait till you get hired and you go get trained on your first shift. Then ask about how do we get tipped out and how does, you know, all that stuff. Just for, for right now, if you ask anybody about money, it's going to turn them off, at least in this industry, in this instance. And if you're doing all this stuff all the way, you know, you're doing all these rapport building techniques and you're, you're doing all this stuff that's help level the playing field for you. You're maximizing your opportunity to just it coming down to great, when can you start? Which is what this is all about. So there you go. Maybe go back through and watch this one again. Maybe go through and watch the entire series again. Make sure that you write this all down, make a plan of attack, and you have to execute it. So you know where to go, you know how big of a radius that you need you know remember 30 minutes create a list of at least 30 to 50 places hopefully 100 if you can if you can make a, a list of 100 places then do it go out drop off resumes fill out applications and then you need to follow up you need to follow up at least once a week for the first two or three weeks and then after that you can cut it to every following up once every two or three weeks and then after that, you can cut down to following up just once a month. But I guarantee you that if you do all this stuff and within those first few weeks, you're going to find someone that's going to give you a shot. There's no way you're going to still be following up once a month, you know, three months out from now. This is a lot of work and you're going to think, you think like, oh man, this is going to take a lot of time. Yes, this is going to be effort. This is going to take a lot of work. And that's why your competition won't do it. Everybody that is your competition, most of them are just sitting at home, sitting on the couch going, oh, I'll go tomorrow, oh, I'll go tomorrow, oh, I'll go tomorrow. The people that go tomorrow don't get the job. The people that get up and go today do. And even if you don't have experience, just by being proactive about working this system to get a job, you're gonna show ambition that is going to be so rare in this industry that I guarantee you it won't be long before you get an opportunity to get a job somewhere. And that's really all this is. This is all about finding the bars, 
going out and trying to befriend the managers and the, and the owners, making friends, and then following up so that they don't forget who you are and they get to know you and like you so that they can give you a shot to get in and start working and kicking an ass as a bartender. So once you start working this system and you get a job, then let me know. Come back and leave messages underneath the videos. I know some of you subscribers already have about getting jobs, but let us know where you're working and we can you know, come visit you sometime. And if you see a comment of somebody else who's got a job in your area, then go visit them, go support them, go give them a high five, tell them good job. Maybe you'll make a new friend. So there you go. That is the getting the job mini series. This is some of the best information that I have in terms of being able to help you get a job. The only X factor is you. You have to take this information, you have to use it. Just knowing it alone isn't gonna get you a job. I highly recommend that you start at the 48 hour getting a job and getting started in 48 hours video to get started doing private parties even if it's to just do one or two so that you can put experience on your resume. Start there. Then build your list. Then go out and farm it and work it until you get your job. If you have any other questions on this or any of the other episodes, just leave them in the comments section below. If you're a fellow working bartender and you have some other cool stories or insights or feedback that can help people get hired, then please share as it will be beneficial to everyone. And that's going to do it for this one. If you're a new viewer, think about subscribing so you can get notifications anytime I have new episodes coming out. If you like this, please hit the thumbs up button down below the video. If you've been a viewer for a while, then please think about supporting me at patreon.com forward slash bartending pro. I thank you for watching. I'm Jason. This has been making you a bartending pro. I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers.